it's officially time to say goodbye to the pure coffee club house blend coffee. As awesome and expensive as this is, it just has way too much caffeine. An insane amount of caffeine. This stuff was not designed to be cold brewed and it should not be cold brewed. You can tell it's good and it wasn't washed because look at that residue on the bottom. That's the best part of this coffee, but never again. Here, look, my Apple Watch has a Happy New Year mode. That's kind of random. Yeah, there it is, Happy New Year. Fireworks, yay! Okay, we got delayed again. I was planning today on doing the drone dropping thing, but I got distracted by the Fry's promo codes. They're selling for $9.99 a portable cold brew coffee system. So I kind of don't have a choice. I had to come out here and check it out. Okay, we have successfully purchased our cold brewing thing and it comes in this novelty container that looks like a uh, giant gallon and a half of milk or something. Yeah, it looks pretty sweet, it was 10 bucks. But since we're over here in this area and there's a Goodwill across the parking lot, I have to stop there. Hopefully I won't get punched by a homeless guy at this Goodwill. All right, just finished a run at Goodwill. And it's funny, I was actually buying some things at Fry's Electronics to make a modification to my Roku remote, which I modified previously and now is not so reliable. But I found another Roku and another remote here. So at least I have a backup now. I was also trying to find some glassware to uh, put my cold brew coffee in because plastic seems to act weird when you have coffee concentrate in it for extended periods of time. We made it back from Goodwill. Um, had a couple of projects planned. First off, I wanted to go to Goodwill to find some glass containers to uh, put the cold brew in. I'd been using uh, these plastic ones, but I think after a while, oh, they start soaking up weird flavors and smells and it, it ruins whatever subsequent coffee you put in there. So I actually found a matching set, or so I think, of these glass things. You've got a large one and a small one and definitely glass. And the main thing I went to Fry's to get is Ta-da! The portable cold brewing, the, uh, oh, it's a Kickstarter. Yeah. Oh yeah, the portable Drippo. That sure was a mighty explosion, huh? Is anyone hurt? That's what it is. Okay, it's kind of cool. Normally Kickstarter is just full of a bunch of scammers that have crazy pipe dreams and ask you for your money and then, I don't know, spend it all on Big Macs. But this is actually for sale and here it is. Just like the bottom's already open. It would be cool to have a portable cold brewer. It says the brew time is 1.5 to 2.5 hours. Hmm. This thing's actually pretty sweet. It was $9.99 on promo code at Fry's. Um, looks like we've got, oh, whoa, multiple chambers. Ah, so there's our screen on the bottom. I guess I need to put your coffee in here. And that screws. Let's read the directions. <gasps> and it comes with paper tree frog filters. I wonder if I can use used coffee grounds in here. I did cold brew this for 24 hours. Just for concept proof, I'm gonna put some old coffee grinds in here. You're supposed to put this in there. Oh, it is working. It's already dripping on the counter. Ew, gross. Um, now we're supposed to fill this with ice water. Okay, I think that's full. It's already dripping. Maybe, maybe I should be assembling each part of this before I start putting stuff together because we were dripping coffee and now we're dripping water everywhere. Okay, and then I should probably put the lid on. And there we go, it looks like we're having some success here. We've got our ice water, our coffee grinds, and then the finished product down here. And while this is percolating, we'll continue on. This is a secondary reason I went to fries. Remember when I modified this Roku remote and then I put the rechargeable battery in it and the charge controller? Well, then I had to add this switch to the side because it was acting weird and I had to be able to power cycle it. And you have this big, ugly 
thing of stupid. I mean, I don't mind it, but everybody I know is like, oh, your Roku remote's so ugly. Like, it's the first thing they notice when they come in here, how ugly my remote for my Roku is. I got a project box, 24 multicolored tactile buttons, and 50 feet of 26 gauge multi-stranded wire. What we're gonna do is completely disassemble this. I'm gonna take out the PCB, and then I'm going to install these buttons on this box. Put everything in here, stick one of the 18650 batteries in here with a battery holder, cut a hole in the side so we can charge it with micro USB, because right now this is pretty janky. And we're gonna have a custom Roku remote. I think it'll be cool. Oh, and after I bought all that stuff at Fry's, when I went to Goodwill to get my glassware, they had another freaking Roku for $15. So I have another Roku 3 now with the remote that has the headphone jack in it. This is important for me because I tend to watch TV in the middle of the night and the TV's next to the wall. I happen to know the apartment next to me is a studio, so there's someone sleeping within five to 10 feet of the speakers on that TV. So I plug the headphone jack in here and then I use, well, this, this Bluetooth, or that, this little speaker right here. And then I can sit here, have the sound right next to me as loud as I want, and I'm not potentially disturbing the neighbors. But now that I have this, which actually seems to be in pretty nice condition, I have a backup remote if this goes horribly sideways and ends up being a fiery car crash. I don't think I've had too much caffeine today. I feel like I have a lot of energy. All right, we've got the lid to the project box here. I've gotten all the pilot holes drilled to match up with the buttons on this remote. And now I'm going to drill the hole slightly bigger to match up with the size of these little clicky buttons. I think this drill bit's the right size, we'll see. Our holes have now been drilled in this thing. They're nice and big. Uh, the buttons will be able to poke through and they'll be able to be pushed pretty easily. This lid was actually designed to have a PCB or a circuit board embedded down in here, and these switches are designed to be mounted to that. So the problem I have is I can't just mount these directly to this lid because there has to be, the base of this switch has to be attached to something so that you can, so that you can push the button. If it's just pressed down solid, you see how there's a, you see how there's a gap between the button the button cap and the switch itself. So I'm gonna have to figure out a way to mount this to something since I'm not using a circuit board in here. This might require a trip to Home Depot. I was trying to figure out how to mount those switches. I just went back to Fry's and got a circuit board to stick inside the box. It has screw holes that it'll mount to the box with. I don't think this side is conductive, so I should be able to stick the switches on this, probably flatten out the little feet here. And essentially I can align them under the cover flat on this board. And this should give us the proper clearance for them to fit. Ooh, check on the gold brew. This is pretty um, light. Not surprising these grounds are used. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and try it. In theory, you just unscrew the top, then unscrew the middle. Dump out the rest of the water. And then remove the basket with the grounds. Then you can just screw the lid back on this and drink your coffee. <laughs> wait, wait. When you open the lid on this, when you try to drink, it, it hits your nose. Okay, I should have known that something Sold on Kickstarter wasn't 100% designed properly. I guess you can... Yeah, that works. That's totally coffee. And it's probably appropriate for 6.15 at night because I probably shouldn't be drinking a lot of caffeine right now. And then... Take this thing apart. This just kind of goes right like that. And there's four screw holes that hold it together. And there's a little gap inside there that in theory should fit a switch. I think it'll work though. I'm gonna go ahead and get all the uh, get all these switches mounted to the board. Uh, and at this point, I believe I can start fastening these to this board. 
That one did not go into the dishwasher. Um, I was gonna use double-sided tape, but we have clearance issues. I think what I'm gonna do is put them in place and then dab hot glue around the edges. I think that'll work. This is a little more difficult to take apart than I realized, but I got the top off. And you can see what they use on these are membrane switches. They're basically, they're basically little contacts, and then on the back of the rubber here, they have these little conductive things, and the buttons overlay on top of this, and when you push the button, it basically pushes that little conductive membrane down onto the circuit board. What I'm gonna do is attach wires to all these, and, and then we'll be able to use them with the switches. Circuit, <laughs> circuit board extraction is complete. This is basically all we need, and it has a little headphone jack right here as well. Uh, these are our power inputs. That's the pairing button, I'm gonna have to do something with that. Um, yeah, let me uh, fire up the soldering iron and uh, see what we can do here. We got these things washed, so now I got the coffee in here. See how nice and dark this is? And uh, the glass will not be soaking up any of the flavors, so when I make different batches with different types, you won't cross-contaminate things. This is gonna be somewhat tedious work, but I was able to solder on connections here. You have to kind of scrape off this material and find the connection points and solder the wires on. So now I have to do two wires for each one of these contacts on here. We've got most of the contacts on here tinned with solder. I went ahead and used the drill to braid together some of this wire. Makes it a lot easier to cut to length and manage it after it's attached to the board. You twist the wires together, you can cut them into little pieces like this, and then you don't have quite as much of a rat's nest on your hands. That was a tedious process, but I now have all of the contacts set up with pairs of wires. Now we can start hooking the switches to these. Yay. I've got a little power supply rigged up for this with a power switch, and we're gonna see if this thing still, in fact, works or not. Try and make sure none of these are shorted. I do not know if this battery's charged. It's been sitting for a long time, so we'll see. We should get a blinking light on here somewhere when it does power up. Hey, it works! I hear the Roku doing things. Sweet! Okay, we're alive. Awesome. <laughs> um, cool. Let's continue on and uh, get this thing installed in the box. There's times in a lot of projects where you ask yourself, is this worth it? Uh, we're making progress. We've got all the switches now attached to this circuit board and wired up to the original Roku remote. I'm gonna test fit the lid on here and then if we're good, we can install all the button caps. I wonder if anyone else has done this to a Roku remote. It's, uh, I think it's probably unique. All right, it's done. Um, turns out I didn't get a box that was big enough to install the power supply, so we had to tack that on the back. I, mean, I don't think it's quite as ugly as the other remote was. It's kind of cool. Even with the battery pack on the back, it sort of sits on the table at an angle, which is, you know, kind of how you'd want to use it. it. Makes it easier to pick it up and stuff. So there we go. I think we've uh, spent enough time and money on Roku remotes, and I have another one here now. Also, I was not able to access the headphone jack inside this thing, so... I won't call it a fail, but... It's not exactly what I was going for with this project, but... It's a remote that works. <laughs> we even got an on-off switch here on the side. So if we're not going to use it for a while, you can uh, power off the battery. And it charges right here with micro USB. But, as you can hear, it's working. <laughs> well, battery's fully charged now. It's just kind of an interesting, um, I don't know, the way it all wound up working out. I started with a remote like this that has the headphone jack on it. And I use this little portable speaker so that I don't bother the neighbors watching TV in the middle of the night. But then the batteries in this kept going dead. I'd have to put two AA's in this thing like, I don't know, at least once every week or two. If you put rechargeable batteries in here, 
they barely work. It usually just tells you the battery's low. So installed the lithium ion battery in there, made it super huge, filled it with glue, then it wasn't very reliable. So then we switched over to this thing. Um, unfortunately, the headphone jack is no longer accessible. I thought about that when I was installing it. I thought, well, I'll just plug the headphone jack in and then have the wire come out, then I can plug it into something else. But the problem is, with these Roku remotes, the second you plug in a headphone jack, it disables the audio on the TV. And I actually have both of these remotes currently paired with the Roku. Alexa, turn on Roku. They're both paired. Okay. But if one of them has the headphone jack in use, then you won't get any audio out of the TV at all. And to fix that, you would have to disconnect some of the solder joints on the board and they were really tiny, like impossible to get to. But as it is right now, I mean, I think this works. I'm using this as my controller and then this as my audio. I guess we're kind of back to square one. But yeah, I mean, this thing's easy to push the buttons on and uh, you can navigate and do everything that you want to do on the TV with it. So you can see in the background there. So, I don't know. Um, I'll just use it for now. I was noticing when I was at Fry's yesterday, they have AAA batteries that are rechargeable, but they're lithium ion, and the battery itself has a micro USB charging port on it. So there's still maybe hope yet for this project that actually didn't require any modifications. But you know, what else am I supposed to do with my free time, right?